Hi, uh, my name is Luke, and this is the first uh, tutorial lecture in a series of lectures by Technicamps about programming in Python. Uh, so this is the introduction chapter, chapter one. Um, the contents of this chapter are going to be um, computer programs, the anatomy of a computer, the Python programming language, which is the programming language we're going to focus on, becoming familiar with your programming environment, analyzing your first program, and finally we'll look at some errors. To start off with computer programs, uh, a computer program is a sequence of instructions and decisions. Computers execute very basic instructions in rapid succession, and then programming is the act of designing and implementing these computer programs. The anatomy of a computer, uh, so we'll start off with the central processing unit, otherwise known as the CPU. Um, this performs program control, so fetching data, uh, and data processing, performing calculations. So your program will be run using something called a fetch, decode, execute cycle, uh, and that's all controlled by the CPU. Your computer also has a bunch of storage devices, uh, including the memory of your system, which is referred to as RAM, random access memory, as well as secondary storage devices such as hard drives, flash drives, SSDs, as well as CD and DVD drives. Most uh, computers then also have input and output devices, which allow the user to interact with the computer. Uh, input devices could be things like mice and keyboards. Uh, output devices might be speakers, printers, uh, the computer monitor, which displays information to the user. So this is kind of a schematic design of a computer or a PC. Um, on the left-hand side here, we've got some input or output devices, which are connected to the computer's ports. On the right-hand side, we've got kind of some more input and output devices, so monitors, speakers, and the internet. Um, the arrows kind of indicate the direction of, of flow of information. Um, so maybe you click your mouse, which provides some information to, into the ports, which is then carried along these vertical lines kind of represent buses in the system, basically the wires that connect everything together and control where information is taken to. Um, the CPU accesses some of this information and performs some processing. Uh, maybe some stuff is stored in the memory that needs to be accessed and so on. So you've kind of got your input and output devices on the outside and then your internal uh, computer in the middle in the black box. So what happens when you run uh, a program? So program instructions and data such as text, numbers, audio or video are stored on the hard drive or hard disk or SSD or a compact disk or a DVD or someone at somewhere else on maybe uh, the network. When a program is started, uh, it is brought into the memory where the CPU can read it. So the information that the CPU is going to need to run that program or use that program is transferred typically into the RAM. The CPU then runs the program one instruction at a time uh, using that fetch, decode, and execute cycle. Um, the program may react to user input, so we might be asked to do provide some input, or maybe it reacts to us clicking in certain things or clicking certain buttons. Um, as directed by these instructions and the user, so the instructions of the program and the input from the user, the CPU is going to read data. It's potentially going to modify that data. It's going to write it back into memory. Um, it may display something on the screen uh, or do something with the secondary storage devices like your hard drives. So we're going to be focusing on the Python programming language. This is a photo of uh, the creator of Python, uh, Guido van Rossum. He started the language as a hobby during his Christmas break in 1989. Uh, he named the language Python because he was a big fan of Monty Python's Flying Circus, uh, the comedy uh, group and series on TV. So a little bit more information about the Python programming language. Uh, it was in the early 1990s, Guido van Rossum uh, designed what would become the Python programming language, so that's when he started. Uh, he was dissatisfied with the languages that were available. They were optimized to write large programs that executed quickly, but he wanted a language that could not only be used to create programs quickly, but could also be, uh, you could also modify those problems uh, in an easy way, those programs in an easy way. 
Um, it was designed, so Python was designed to have a much simpler and cleaner syntax uh, than other popular programming languages such as Java, C, and C++, making it easier to learn. Um, syntax here is kind of meaning the, the, the language of instructions that Python uses. Um, we'll see some uh, Python programming and the syntax that it uses slightly later on. Okay, so we have the idle IDE. That's kind of where we're going to be writing our programs. Um, it's comprised of two parts, uh, an interactive shell, and then the editor where we are going to write our program. So if I show you, this is the interactive shell. And if I go file, new file, uh, this is where this blank file, which is currently called untitled, is where I'm going to write my program. So I'm going to write my programs in a file and then run them, and the output or inputs are going to be appear in the shell. Okay. So let's look at our first program. Um, the traditional first program for computer scientists to write is a hello world program. Um, so line one starts with a hash symbol and then says my first Python program. Line two says print hello world. We'll examine this program in the next section. Um, so, but before you, we do that, maybe it's worthwhile you guys pausing the video and typing this out in that new file that you've made um, as part of your ID. Be careful uh, with spelling. Um, you need to make sure that you're spelling print correctly. Uh, and Python is case sensitive. So if you spell print with a capital P, it means something different to print with a lowercase p. And I'm going to do that now in my... Uh, my new file. So I'm going to start with a hash symbol. Uh, my this Python program. And I'm going to type print hello world. Okay. Couple of things to note about organization. Um, your source code, so the code that I just wrote, when I save it, it's going to be stored as a .py file. Um, what we suggest you do is you create a bunch of folders for each of the lectures that we're going to go through, uh, and then store the relevant Python files in the, in the relevant lecture folder. Um, be sure you know where your IDE is storing your files. Um, it's a good idea to, to make sure that you know where every, all of your work is being stored. Um, backing up your work for this course maybe is, is not uh, so important, but in, in terms of just good practice, backing up your work to an external flash drive, uh, an external hard drive, or maybe um, a, a network is, is, is a good idea. Uh, and then finally, this blue, this blue box at the bottom isn't relevant for us. Um, this is adapted from uh, undergraduate students, um, so there won't be a P drive necessarily in your, in your labs. Uh, like other programming languages, uh, you can write uh, or save a, a complete Python program in a file and let the interpreter execute the instructions all at once, or you can run the instructions one at a time using an interactive mode. We are predominantly going to be doing the first case rather than the second. Okay, so what have we just done? Well, we've written a program in our editor. Um, this is going to be converted into a source file. Uh, the source file is then compiled into something called bytecode, um, which is run on a virtual machine, uh, and then that runs our program. So uh, the compiler is going to generate bytecode instructions, um, basically simpler instructions for the virtual machine. The virtual machine is a program that is similar to the CPU of your computer, and then any necessary libraries, any extra information uh, and libraries for, let's say, drawing graphics, are going to be automatically located and included by the virtual machine. Okay, so it's the flow of our Python program that we've just written turning into uh, bytecode, which is then run on a virtual machine. So maybe we should analyze our first program, uh, the program that we just wrote, the, uh, the print hello world program. So a Python program typically contains one or more lines of instructions. Uh, these are statements um, that, can be that will be translated and executed by the interpreter. The first line in our program here, the one that is in green, uh, is a comment. It starts with a hash symbol, um, which makes the interpreter uh, turn it into a, a comment. It basically is 
providing descriptive information to uh, humans, but does mean essentially nothing to the computer. Um, so it's providing descriptive information for programmers, not the computer. The second line, the one that begins with print, uh, contains a statement that prints a line of text onto the screen, uh, which should say, hello world. So I'm going to run my program. And if I go back into my file here, I can press run, run module. It's going to tell me I need to save it. I'm going to save it as uh, um, hello world. One. Uh, and then I could also select where I'm saving it. And again, it's being saved as a .py file. Okay, so now that it's saved, it runs, and you can see that in the interactive shell, it's output hello world. Okay, which is the information that was stored within these two uh, parentheses. Okay. So we've used the Python print function here. Um, what is a function? A function is a collection of programming instructions that carry out a particular task. In this case, they print a value onto the screen. What's really nice about functions are they typically are, are written by somebody else. Right? I didn't have to write uh, how the print function worked, I could just call it. Um, and then inside these parentheses, I can add extra values. Uh, I can give arguments. Um, all of the arguments I can give are optional. If no arguments are given, uh, a blank line is going to be printed in my shell. Okay, in this example, we have provided some arguments, uh, and these are the values to be printed, one after another, and each one is separated by a blank space. So the answer is, will be printed, the next value to be printed is 6 plus 7, and then finally an exclamation mark. So to use or call a function in Python, you need to specify, firstly, the name of the function that you want to use. In the previous example, the name of the function we wanted to use was print, and then any arguments needed by the function to carry out the task. Uh, so in, in this case, the arguments we provided were hello world. The arguments that are provided to a function are enclosed in parentheses, and multiple arguments are separated with commas. Okay, now we move on to kind of the final section of this, uh, this first introductory chapter, which is all about errors. There are two categories of errors that we'll, in, uh, we'll no doubt interact with because lots of people do make mistakes. Um, it's a very common thing to uh, occur. The first main category of errors is called compile time errors. Um, these are known sometimes, some of them are syntax errors. Uh, this typically happens if you have a spelling mistake. Um, you've capitalized something that shouldn't be capitalized. Uh, your punctuation isn't correct. Um, but syntax errors can also occur when you incorrectly order your statements. Uh, you don't have the right number of parentheses. So you've opened a parenthesis uh, without closing it, or you've closed one without opening it. Um, maybe you've forgot to close your quotation marks um, around something contained inside a print statement. That would be an example of a syntax error. So no executable program has been created by the compiler. Uh, and then to correct this, uh, it will tell us the first error that's listed. We will correct that error and compile it again. If another error comes up, we'll correct that error. We just repeat okay, until all the errors are fixed. So we compile the program. It tells us which the first error. We fix the first error. We try and compile the program again and slowly but surely remove all of the errors from our code. The second main category of error is a runtime error. Um, these are typically due to uh, problems with the logic in the system uh, and may cause uh, the program will then run um, but produce unintended results and the program may crash. Okay. So let's uh, look at some syntax errors first. I would like you to go and go back to the uh, code that you wrote that hopefully worked correctly and try and uh, enter something slightly different. So instead of having print hello world, try and call print hello world, but with a capital P. Maybe try and leave out the quotation marks around hello world. Maybe have one quotation mark and one apostrophe around hello world. And then try and do it without actually closing the second parentheses. See what error messages are going to be generated each time and kind of get used to identifying where in the code the error message is referring to. 
Finally, uh, do we're going to do kind of a similar thing with logic errors. Um, what happens if you try and print 1 divided by 0? What happens if you print hello word instead of hello world? What happens if you completely remove line 2 and completely remove our print hello world statement? The program should still compile and should still run, but the output may not be what you expect. Okay, so those are some tasks to complete um, for this first session. Uh, thank you for listening, and I will uh, see you in the next one.